<clears throat> Welcome back to the cave, which would be lessons five and six, you know, for going through that six week process. Music today by Gregorian, Masters of Chant. I was going to have Paul Simon, but he was a bit jerky. Now, um, this morning, I want you to know, you know how I talked, like the Desidrus Orban talked about the gift of creativity. You know, there's the, the wrapping, there's the box, there's the gift. And, and some of that uh, wrapping and gift might be, you might translate that to material. So you have to have the best brushes, the best paints, the best everything before you can even start or think about creating. But that is a lie. You can, you don't need all the expensive stuff because I know art materials are really, really expensive. So take it out on a balance. Today I've got, um, like this is a, you know, an expensive pot. It's, um, better put my glasses on, eh? <laughs> so I can bloody see. Uh, this is um, Chroma uh, here and this is Atelier. You know, both expensive brands, but in the other colour I'm going to use, it's a demonstration tub from Bunnings, and you can go in there and get a big pot like that for 10 bucks, different colours, you know, so you can mix it up. Um, I don't believe in stinting on, on paint, like the artist quality is far superior than the student quality, because it's got no pigment in it, the student quality, and you can be trying to create something and not know why you're not getting the outcome you want and it's because of the paint because of the lack of pigment so you can use like use that for foundational artists uh, the student quality stuff or stuff from Bunnings slap that down and use your great paint for over the top of it you know so it starts singing now lessons five and six we're going to start painting and it's going to be black and white in one color now this is interesting too, going on the economy side of things, you know, what you can produce with just three colours. But not only that, it's, it's a fabulous exercise on, um, you know, what, what you can mix with just three colours. Like it's really endless. So I've started the day uh, and how we would normally, like normally we would, I would take these out in the yard, people would, you know, we'd be... In the, but I can't now when I'm demonstrating and it would be on a canvas. So at the end of your drawing and collage and that, and we're going to base the paintings on them. Now when uh, I usually say get some canvases, now that's up to the individual whether they want one big canvas, whether they want nine little ones based on the nine things they did, whether they want a triptych, whether they want a uh, portrait, whether they want a landscape, it doesn't matter, that's a whole individual choice. Uh, so we all start with uh, white canvases and then even I'm showing you the difference like in the black, white and one colour, you can start your base off. So I'm, I've chosen black and white. It's not exactly but, excuse me, it's burn umber. Adrian Williams put me onto that because black is a dead colour. If you want a good black, you just mix all your primaries together. You get a good black. They, they, they've got a depth that... Just buying black doesn't have now with this burn umber it looks black but I want, if I want a real depth I'd add um, blues to it you know phthalo blue whatever you can purples you can get all different colors going in it still looks black but there's this undulating tonal quality to it if you mix other things into it so hopefully I can try and explain that now so uh, I've got the yellow ochre board I've got the blackboard. Usually I'd have a canvas, like I said, but I'm just painting on boards. Just to make it simpler because we're inside the studio. And a whiteboard. Now, these are based on, uh, you have to do the composition over the top. Now I'm going to, I'm going to concentrate on this drawing again. And I'm going to use this section for the three boards. And to do it, so I can look at it, I'll put it over here so I can see it. And we'll go into, um, oh, also what I want to tell you too, I've also used flow medium. This is Joe Sonia's flow medium in the burn number and the white instead of water because it doesn't break down the pigments like water does. Water will break it down, but 
flow medium weight. So I've got used flow medium in there uh, to make it flow, basically. <laughs> we might start on this one first because it's central. Now, because it's black, I'll have to either do white or yellow ochre, but I'm doing black on there. So I might uh, start, I you know, have to have the glasses off to actually see that. And basically, I'm just going to try and, it doesn't matter if it dribbles, um, and this does because it's very, get a basic, uh, composition of course this area up here is already sort of yellow ochre I might do a bit do a bit more in there a bit more because it's um I don't know if it's a corrugated paper or the... And there's a bit coming over here from right, entering and that's on a curve so I'll stick them in there. So that's that for that one. I might uh, see these beautiful brushes here. This is, um, I went to a Lorna Crane workshop Oh, you ever want to go to brush mate? Go to a Lorna Crane workshop. She's fabulous. Uh, I'm just going to put a bit of a few marks in there. It really doesn't matter. As, as I'll show you later, you can keep changing these, and I might try the black with that one. So that's for that one. Now I'll do bring over here and do uh, white on the yellow ochre, and I'll. I'll um, I might do this one over here now, that's the last panel. And it's broken up with that. See, keep it as loose as you can, but just create a um, some sort of composition. it for that one but there's a because this is sort of white too I might I might get this brush and go in with a bit of see that brush I made these when I came them they're actually my brushes I didn't make them in the workshop I came home and made them you know there's a difference if you go to a workshop glean whatever you can from from your tutor but when you come home take what you've learned don't don't use the works you've created in the workshop because really if you've been directed it's not fully your work but if you come home and create a series of work from what you've learnt in the workshop then that's authentic that's got integrity you see a lot of work people go to workshops and suddenly they're in art competitions and all that are I sound, I sound judgmental there, and I am. <laughs> okay, that's for that one. So you see that? So it's very simple what we're going to do. So that one. And I've got this one. Okay. Now I'm going to do the white. I can't use the white from here. So that's going to be, this one is going to be the, the end one there. I'm going to bring in a bit from the top. So that'll be, on. oh, and use all different brushes. I get a lot of brushes from King Kong and that, you know, I don't, like I say, people, people can have all the money in the world and have all the best quality stuff. They can spend a fortune on easels and paints and brushes and pastels. But if they don't have the gift, <laughs> what's it doesn't matter. And you can create the most amazing things with little. So, yeah, mix it up. Mm. 
love that moon shape. It used to be a feather in a previous life. It's not now. It's turned into a mandarin. Now it's a moon. I like that. See how things work. See how your mind works as you go along. And I'm saying now it turns into a moon. Now with that thought in my head, I might that might end up really yellow ochre because because I want it to look like a moon. And that's what happens when you let your mind go and allow yourself open to, to what wants to flood into you. Like I say all the time, if you're controlling stuff, nothing's going to come in. Because it can't, you've got it blocked off. Okay? Now that little bit up there. Um, I might just go in there with a bigger brush now and do a, do a lot of black there because that is black in there, burn umber. And like I say, always be aware of how things are, the edges. You don't have to be too, too, uh, no, whatever now, it's really loose, this is loose, this is, we're exploring the 40 acres, okay, we're going all around the 40 acres, and we'll come back, so that's, um, I might just reinforce these and make them, make the lines a bit more, a bit stronger, because they're a bit weak, And you know, it's like I told you before about having an end result in your head, what it, what you want it to look like when you finish. I have no idea what this is going to look like when I finish. It could be a big bomb and a big mess. And that's all right because you have to be true. You can't be like all those people on Instagram all having a fabulous life and everything's wonderful. It's all bullshit, isn't it? You know, we, we all have, and that, you know, never count them as failures. They're just new experiences, you know. Um, if it doesn't work, but we can make it work anyway. So we can, um, remember, beat it till it sings. That's what we can do. Beat it till it sings. All right, now, I'm going to leave that um, dry now. And as you can see, they're very, very loose um, breaking up of space. And that's what it is. It's breaking up the space. That's what composing is. We've composed an area and broken up the space. And I'll come back to you when it's all dry and we'll go from there. Okay. Oh, well, we're waiting for those uh, boards to dry, and that's why it's good to do multiple canvases because you've got to wait. If you're anything like me, you're so impatient, you end up grabbing it and putting another colour over the top before it's actually dry. So it's good to be working on multiples. Um, what I want to uh, come up with now while they're drying is, you know, they say Picasso invented collage. Can you imagine being the first person to actually express yourself in collage but if Picasso invented it David Hockney took it that one step so much further now if you look at this image here now that's all collaged multiple multiple photos of the same scene and then he's brought them home but they're his photos he didn't borrow them from someone else it's not someone else's image it's his he's looked at it and think this is what I want he's taken the photo multiple multiple images all around and then come home and expanded them and minimized them and all that so you you still end up with a fairly realistic uh, image but it's not realistic it's how we actually see things now realism if you took a photo and then you just showed someone a photo you are actually divorced from it you're separated from it so you are standing there looking at it when you do it like this, like David Hockney has, 
it, he's done it how we see things. Like we don't stand there and look at something like flat. Our eye goes over there, it could be a colour or a light, and you bounce off and go here and then back and then forward, over, under, and you're all around. That's how we see. So we don't see flatly, we, we see all around. And that's a fabulous way to collage to work because you can uh, maximise things. And it's like I've seen, seen an image of a bridge once and all these multiple images and it was like experiencing, driving over the bridge, looking up at the great span, looking out, looking at you, you are in the middle of it. You can't get that from one photo. Now these are uh, the uh, artists I absolutely love and the thing they all have in common is they break down things to their purest form, their space and that's, that's what I love, that's what I admire, that's what I attain to, very rarely get I believe and I always think it's like a ballerina, you know, uh, if you go and see a ballet and the, the, this magnificent pirouette from the ballerina and it's exquisite breathtaking but you don't want to see her gnarled old toes from getting to that exquisite point it's like I said before we, we want to hear the song we don't want to see the bruises so this is Milton Avery uh, taking so you know how I said this can work through anything landscape portrait whatever uh, so Milton Avery's broken that down to its barest, simplest form, which is, uh, like I said, not easy. Because in those spaces you will see it, this, the, it is so subtle. The colour under the colour, the transition, the breakup of space. Very subtle, very sensitive. Even though it looks dead easy, it's not. Never confuse simplicity with easy. Um, David... Uh, Milton Avery is an American painter, no longer alive. Now this is um, Colin McCann, who I adore. This is landscape. And see, he's broken that down to its simplest form. And underneath this, you just think, oh, that's yellow ochre. No, if you look deeper into that, there's that many layers of colour under that to give it a depth that is not simple, even though the end result looks like that pirouette under all that is some sort of like bunions on the feet getting to that that simplicity but that's what we want to attain okay like look at this magnificent little bit of turquoise down here and also George O'Keefe when I was uh, talking before about the gift parcel and anything you when you dive down into one subject matter to explore it instead of running everywhere looking for things you see it in so many different ways different times of the day different shadows how your mood affects how you look at something you can come in and the day before you've been really down and you know it looks oh that's all black and dark and then the next day you come in you've had a shift in perception now Marianne Williamson calls a a shift in perception, a change of perception, a miracle. And that's what it is because a change in percep perception is a total different way of seeing and you haven't actually moved. Unreal. So this is Georgia O'Keeffe. And these are, she just painted so many times her building in, in um, New Mexico. The same subject, so different different times of day, different seasons, different how mood she was. Unbelievable to get her bodies and bodies and bodies of work out of the same subject matter. Okay, so I'm just showing you them and of course we're all attracted to different things so this is what I love. You may love something totally different but when you do look at what you love, ask yourself why do I love this? What is it about this that I love? Is it the way they break up the space? Is it the colours they use? Is it the, the imagery they use? What, what is it that makes you, that gives you, like you know when you first see these sort of works, even though you don't even know who the artist was, this happened to me, I just saw these works, and, oh my God, it hit somewhere I didn't know existed, you know? 
in, in inside me and I just fell in love with these images so it's a real spiritual thing too when you see someone else's expression that you fall in love with yourself someone else's I mean we're here to make you fall in love with your own expression but there's always someone else out there you fall in love with theirs that's when we really connect on a global level and that's how important art is okay so we'll wait for those to dry and then I'll be back with you. Well, the boards are dry now with the, uh, you know, really loose composition on them. Now, um, like I said, if, if I was outside, if we're doing uh, a usual class, we would have probably big canvases and great big um, pots of paint so like in ice cream containers and have the canvas on the ground after we've done that, put that on the ground when it's dry and then throw a container, like an ice cream container, four litre of colour over it. But because we're working on the boards, um, I've got to be a bit, I'm a bit more restricted. So um, I've got, what I'm going to do now is just, I don't, I don't want to try and control it, I'm just going to put some um, colour on there, you know, we're only working in um, black and white in one colour, right? You can just move it around a bit. So that's got to dry now. Now what will happen when that yellow ochre hits the black or the burn umber, it'll turn green. So you'll have areas that are just yellow, you'll have areas that are black, and then you'll have areas that are green. And for the other two, I'm just going to reinforce the black. Um, then we're going to have to wait for them to dry dry again uh, till I come back to you with the next process. So I hope you can see them properly. It's hard to move that now because we'll spill everything. Anyway, so I'm just going to get a... Um, little container I save everything you know you, you'd noticed when when we we're doing uh, yesterday you know the my drawings are pinned to George Seymour's vote for me <laughs> vote for me posters you know because I I put some up for him you know so so I reuse them now and they when they're not haven't got drawings clipped to them you know they're stashed in between paintings to protect them so same thing I'm just going to pour some black over here, not much left there, but I'll empty out some stuff. Might get a bit more. Uh, actually, I might just put a a little bit more yellow on that somewhere. So I love where that hits. Yeah, that'll be interesting. So you can see they all look like they're obliterated, but they're not. Once it dries, you'll see the thing, uh, the drawing coming through. So we're back, uh, back later. We can't sit here and watch paint dry. That reminds me of a movie once. Or, um, oh, what was it then? Studio 55 in New York, Andy Warhol movie of someone sleeping, went for nine hours, just concentrated on this, this face that was sleeping. He never woke up, didn't snore, didn't do anything. Just nine hours of looking at him. I suppose that can be mesmerizing, but we're not gonna try that today, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'll be back when these are dry. See you in a while.